Sorry, Abraham, I can't hear you at home. servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching, with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Saviour. To Titus, my true child, in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Saviour. May God add his blessings to uh, the reading of his word. Sorry, Abraham. Uh, you just check the green light is on the, on the box? It isn't. It's red. Just, just, press, just press it once. Please. It's green. Green means go. I hope you've all had a lovely summer. Um, well, the summer is still here, sort of. Technically, we're in autumn, you know, it's trying to transition from shorts to trousers, isn't it? <laughs> Some of us, maybe, <laughs> I don't. Um, it's time to try, we're moving on. Um, we're officially in uh, autumn. It's great to be back in autumn, if I can say that. From barbecues to broth, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm trying too hard. Um, but here we are, uh, looking, uh, or we'll be going through the book of Titus. Uh, question is this, why, why are we going through the book of Ti Titus? Why are we looking uh, in our times together like this, going through the book of Titus? Well, first, uh, it says in Second Timothy, uh, chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 you might know these verses quite well it says this all scripture is breathed out by god and is profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training that the man of god or the women of god may be complete equipped for every good work and titus is one of them so we're going to go through the book of titus secondly as we go through the book of titus we will see how important sound doctrine is uh, sound doctrine, by that I mean teaching that is, or teaching and preaching that is rooted and grounded in God's word, in the Bible, and how our lives must, must match what we say and what we do. Uh, here in Titus, we will see a beautiful uh, weaving together of doctrine and deeds, uh, belief and behavior, uh, conduct and creed, what we say, we live what we believe. We live what we believe. If you love ice cream, whether it's autumn, winter, summer, you will go for ice cream. It depends on what kind. My favorite is Marshville ice cream. I think that's the best in the world. I'll always go for Marshville ice cream. I live what I believe. And that's what we will see as we go uh, through the book of, or this letter uh, from Paul uh, to Titus. Uh, just a brief uh, background on the book of Titus before we jump in. Uh, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, is writing this letter to a young pastor or a, or a leader or an elder, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, to a man called Titus, encouraging him as he ministers to this church in Crete. Uh, there are people in the church in Crete who are diverting away from the sound doctrine and turning away from sound doctrine, from God's word. So we will see a little bit of that. And um, so Paul is writing to Titus, young Titus. Uh, he probably in, in, he was in his early, uh, late 20s maybe, or early 30s. So Paul is writing to this man, Titus, uh, to take action, to stand firm, to teach faithfully, and to live the life, what he is preaching, if that makes sense. Let's pray, and then we will uh, look into these verses. Father, we ask you that as you... Um, be with us this morning, Father, we ask you that you would come and help us again through your Holy Spirit to come and open our eyes and our ears that we may listen, you, we may hear what you have to say to us. Father, all scripture is from you and we want to hear. We not only want to hear, but we want to be doers of your word so that we will live what we believe. We believe, like we sang uh, in, in the eternal resurrection, we believe in you, we believe in your son Jesus, to help us to live more and more and be like him. Father, we commit this uh, time into your hands. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Um, water, we all need water to survive. In fact, I'm quite thirsty, hence 
got a water behind me. We all need water to survive. Human beings, uh, animals, fish, birds, all of us need water. No water, no life. Simple as that. It's basic science. Uh, water is a fascinating thing. Um, I was maybe I, I, in my early teens at school, I was quite fascinated by this thing called anomalous expansion of water. I don't know what it is, but I'll try and explain what it is. Um, it stands, it basically means that water, uh, you know, wh when it's really cold, water up is frozen, but at the bottom, apparently it stays up to four degrees. That's how fish or underwater being things can survive. And it's amazing, isn't it, that this is how God designed his creation to be, so that fish or whatever lives under that uh, can survive. Um, and water cycles is, is another amazing thing in physics, that all you know, rivers and lakes, they all go back to the sea. Now, why am I telling you about this water cycle? Because I think God is like the ocean. All things come from him. I think we saw this when we looked through the book of Colossians. All things exist for him. They exist through him. And all things will bring him glory. So here we see uh, something very similar. God saves and calls and commissions Paul, and Paul in turn uh, plants a church in Crete, and God uses Paul and saves and calls Titus to be the leader there at this church in Crete, and people are being saved. Who gets the glory? God does. Ultimately, God gets the glory. So here are my very simple points. They're an amazing point. Number one, we are God's servant. Let's look at the first one. We are servants of our Lord. Paul, verse 1, a servant of God. What an introduction, isn't it? <laughs> how, how do you introduce yourself? You know, if I was introducing myself, I would say, uh, my name is this, and I am this and this. So, for example, I am Abraham, and if I was introducing myself to you, I'd say I'm the pastor of this church, right? My name and what I do. Or I could say, I'm Tom Cruise, and I'm an actor. You can believe what you want. Uh, our names and what we do gives us an identity in that context, right? So here we see something very similar happening. Uh, Paul is introducing himself, Paul, servant of God. That's how he's introducing himself, a servant of God. He wasn't just God's servant or God's slave. In a fearful sense, but he is God's servant, bought and paid for by the precious blood of his Savior, Jesus Christ. He is no longer his own. He is a servant of God. He belongs to his master, Jesus Christ. That's his identity. Not by what he does, but by his relationship with Jesus. And in some ways, I wonder if this also shows us the humility uh, that characterizes Paul's faith, his life. What about us? We're not ourselves anymore. We don't belong to ourselves anymore, but we belong to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We belong to Jesus. So our identity is not in what we have done or what we can do. Don't get me wrong, those things are good. But I, our identity is in what Jesus has done for us. That's how Paul introduces himself. Paul servant of God, or servant of Jesus. Or let me push that a little bit more. Not just our lives then, isn't it? It's more than that. Our house, our money, our family, our children, our jobs, our talents, our gifts, all belong to Jesus. Yes, God has given us those things to enjoy, but ultimately, it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to him because we belong uh, to him. We can enjoy these things, but ultimately, it belongs to him. Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Apostle in the strictest sense means uh, somebody who has seen Jesus. But Paul has seen Jesus, you might remember, on the road to Damascus. Uh, Mark mentioned that in our first service. Oh, David. Um, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? So he has seen Jesus face to face, the risen Savior. But in a broader sense, the word apostle means a messenger, somebody who is entrusted with a message. And this can be applied to all believers. 
So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, we are in some ways messengers. We are, we have been given this amazing message to share about the goodness of Jesus Christ. And we see this, people like Paul, people like Titus, people like you, people like me. And think back, uh, you know, when you were growing up, who shared the gospel with you? It could be your parents, it could be your Sunday school teacher, it could be your pastor, your elder. They are all messengers. They are being who they are or who have been called to be messengers, to be, if you like, in a broader sense, an apostle, somebody with a message to share. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, verse 1, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth which accords with godliness. Paul's existence, if I can put it that way, is, look down there in verse 1, for the sake of the faith of God's elect. His apostleship exists for the faith, for the building up of God's elect. And look how he says there, knowledge of truth, verse 1, knowledge of truth leads to godliness. Like I said, we believe, sorry, we live what we believe. Um, if you believe that Liverpool, I don't know, I'm not a great football fan, if you believe that Liverpool is the best uh, football team in the world, you wouldn't go and support Chelsea, I take it, would you? No. You will cheer for them. You will buy their stuff and cheer for your best team, Liverpool. And this is what really I want to emphasize, is that um, if we believe in the right things, by that I'm sound doctrine, that has to be shown in the way we talk, in the way we live, in the way we handle our money, in the way we do our jobs, in the way we serve. And here we see again, um, opportunity like this is to dig into God's word, look at sound doctrine, look at God's word, and say to ourselves and ask ourselves, what does this mean to me? What, does this, would, what would this look like for us as a church? to live out this sound doctrine. In other words, what I believe, what we believe will affect how we live. And how I live, how we live, will demonstrate what we believe. They're very much connected. These are not just abstract thing. If we are servants of the Lord, we need the knowledge of truth. And this knowledge of truth must always lead us, as Paul says here, to godliness that has to be shown in our works, in our words, in our lives. Our lives is always a reflection of what we truly believe. As simple as that. I might not say it, but you look at my life and you will see what I believe. Now, it's wonderful to be a Christian, isn't it? To be servants and messengers for Christ. But I wonder, at some point, I have asked questions a few times in my life, in my Christian life. I've been a Christian uh, maybe just over 15 years now. Um, and I've asked this question a few times. Am I really a Christian? How many of you had asked that question sometime in your life? Maybe you're still asking now. Am I really a Christian? <laughs> Am I really saved? Am I really growing in my faith, in my walk with Jesus? Uh, do I, do God... Does, does God really love me? I know it says here in the Bible, but does he really love me? Hopefully our next point will help us uh, to answer some of those uh, questions that we have sometimes. Uh, secondly, we are secure in the Lord. Look down in verse 2, or verse 1. Uh, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus, for the sake of faith of God's elect, in verse 2, in hope of eternal life, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching. So we're not only servants of the Lord, but we are also secure in the Lord. Um, I once went rock climbing, not those proper rock climbing, but like an indoor thing. Um, so a fake rock climbing. And two of my friends were in charge of um, holding on to the rope that kept me safe. You know, I don't know if you've been to this what do they call it? Uh, inside one, indoor ones, whatever they're called. Sorry? Climbing wall? 
probably. But the, two of my friends were in charge of this rope. So there was my, basically my lifeline. If they let go, that would have been the end of me, but thankfully they didn't. But it would have been very foolish of me to go up, I don't know, it was probably 20 feet high, uh, to go up there, climb there by myself, with no backup, without my friends. And in some ways, Paul understood that radical service for the Lord Jesus Christ, for Lord Jesus Christ, must always be grounded in our security, in our secureness of us being in him. So in verse 2 and 3, Paul gives us two reasons why we have a sure and certain security, a hope that is very much secure. It's not like, oh, I hope you get better soon, not that kind of thing. A hope, a fact. So number one, God's witness, and number two, God's word. So Paul here uh, is uh, addressing one of the great promises of Scripture, uh, placing all its weight on the character of God himself. The God who never lies. You know, God, sometimes we think God is a little bit like us, maybe a little bit better. You know, sometimes he goes through up and down and he's, he's got it. No, 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 he's, he's stable. More than that, he doesn't change. That's why we say yesterday, today, tomorrow, whatever, 2,000 years later, God remains unchanged. The God who never lies has given us this promise the hope of eternal life, that no matter what happens, our security is not in what we are, who we are, in what we can do or can't do, but is in God's promises. What a hope. And secondly, eternal life is the very life of God. You know, eternal life with anything abstract, so we get eternal life like a big bowl of, I don't know, cookie or something here yeah. no, no, no. the eternal life is basically the life of God himself God gives you his life that is eternal life our hope is anchored in God himself and Paul points out that this hope of eternal life was promised when look down there in verse 1 and 2 a promise before ages or before time began it wasn't an afterthought and you know, God was sitting there and getting bored and thinking ah I'm going to do this. No, no, no. It says, or Paul says here, promised before ages or time began. End of verse 2. It's crazy to think, isn't it, that our salvation is not an afterthought. It is very much in God's mind. Planned to the last detail a long time ago, before ages began. Our security and confidence in the Lord is certain. And how did he make this known to us? Verse 3, through the preaching of his word. And at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. Jesus Christ stepped into the world, the very word of God. He came and brought us life eternal died for us that's what we remembered in our first service that his body was broken his blood was shed so that through him we might have life eternal secure for certainty jesus the word of god manifest preached the gospel and now titus like paul urges titus to keep preaching this good news this message that ultimately God will get all the glory. So what role did we play in our salvation? Nothing, <laughs> if I can put it that way. It is God who imparts salvation. I always say, I was just, in fact, I was just saying to our kids to, uh, yesterday before bedtime, you know, when, I cro when we cross the road, me and my, uh, Timothy, Timothy is uh, two and a half, you know, I asked Esther and Zach, you know, what keeps Timothy safe when we cross the road? Is it my hand or is it his hand holding on to mine? Obviously, they said, it's my hand that's holding on to him. So I said, very similarly, it's like that with us. You know, we go through ups and downs, struggles, in our lives, but it's not my hand that keeps us safe. It's his hand, always. 
He is looking after us. We are secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can break this relationship. And this hope is for all of us. For those of us who are Christian believers, we can rejoice in this. And if you're here watching on Zoom, exploring Christianity, this is the hope that Jesus offers us. A life that is sure, certain, an open invitation. A hope that is forever. And briefly, we are, uh, our final point, we are set apart for the Lord. Uh, Paul again uh, provides a word of encouragement to Titus, the recipient of this letter, to find his security in Christ. It says there in verse 4, to Titus, uh, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Savior. And Paul is encouraging uh, Titus, young Titus, to keep drinking, to draw his strength from God. Paul is a spiritual father to Titus, uh, because Titus was most likely uh, became a believer uh, through Paul's ministry. And both Titus and Paul had the same faith, one Lord, one Savior, a common faith. The same gospel that saved Paul saves Titus, the same gospel that saved Paul and Titus saves us. A common faith. So Paul now encourages Titus to preach this same message that saved him. It's been passed on 2,000 years, or even before. Um, was it, again, um, yeah, it's amazing to hear, like, I don't know if you've been keeping up with uh, uh, the Open Doors ministry on Facebook or whatever, uh, you know, they're urging us as Christians in the West to pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan because it's tough, simple as that. But to think that the gospel has reached Afghanistan is in itself crazy, isn't it? How is that possible? Well, somebody, a messenger, must have gone in, shared the gospel. And what did God do? He's calling people to himself. So this gospel, the same gospel that changed Paul, the same gospel that changed Titus, the same gospel that changed us, is for everyone who will listen. It's a common faith. We trust in one Lord, one Savior. Now, methods might change, but the message doesn't change because we're sharing this common faith. Same grace, the unmerited favor from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So here is Titus chapter 1, uh, verse 1 to 4, just exploring later that we are, just like Paul, we are called to be God's servants. We're not our own anymore. We don't belong to ourselves. What we have is not ours, but we use it to bless other people, to serve God. We are secure in God, that our salvation is not uh, flaky. It's here today, gone tomorrow. No, 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 our salvation is secure in God because it is God. This God doesn't lie. His promises are always true. And finally, we are set apart for God. We're different. We're called to be different. Like I said, we live what we believe. So we want to focus on sound doctrine, but we also want to focus on our life, sound life, if I can put it that way. Sound doctrine that leads to godliness. Let me pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And Father, we thank you that we, can f get, we have this opportunity to feed from your word. And Father, sometimes when we read our Bibles, Father, we think we're just, we're just reading, there's nothing, there's nothing going on, we don't feel the buzz. But sometimes, Father, we know that it is good to feed on your word, just like food. Sometimes it's simple as sandwich, but we know that that will nourish our body. So, Father, how often time we neglect to feed from your word, how often we neglect sound doctrine, which then shows in the way we speak or talk or the way we live, Father, we drift away from you. 
So, Father, we ask you that as we focus uh, for the next few weeks on uh, the book of Titus, Father, help us that we would really uh, dig into uh, this book. And, Father, we ask you that we would, again, refresh our hearts and our minds and fill it with sound doctrine, theology, uh, words of living, that our lives, our words, our thoughts will bring you glory. Father, help us to believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. Not just believe in him, but to live what we believe. So, Father, we ask you that you would help us this coming week in all that we do and say, Father, that we will live a life that is worthy. Father, we ask you that you would help us. Again, some of uh, uh, us are parents as we go back to school uh, with kids and, Father, back to work. Father, help us that we may live a life that will bring glory and honor to your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.